How you doing, everybody? My name is Homie Gibb, and I'm a student at JTech, and I study diesel technology. Today, I'm going to be showing you the basic concepts of a rear differential. And this is just a heavy duty differential for a semi. Uh, so, we're going to start with your input, which would be your pinion. Uh, so, what you'll have is your, your, your yoke will be here and your drive shaft attached to it spins this pinion gear around on a bearing. There's a bearing in here, there's a bearing in here. Then that kind of motion transfers into your ring gear, which turns this. So this will go around and around and around and around inside of the case. So That'll give you your, uh, you know, your motion from being ro rotational this way to being rotational this way, two two ways out. Um, now, if you were to take a turn in your semi, it would look like this because what you have to realize is. If this was just turning the wheels and it was turning both wheels at the same time, your inside wheel would slip. It would, it would, it would just turn as fast as the one on the outside is, and you would cause excessive wear on your tires because of it. And you're overworking your rear diff. So what happens is the drive axle is coming out of here, and as you're making the turn, one wheel will spin slower while this spins faster to compensate for that turn that you're making, left or right. They both, they both turn exactly the same as you make your turn. So you have your side gear, you have your spider gears, which on a normal uh, light duty vehicle, you'd only have two. And instead of this being a cross, it would just be a single bar. And you have your caps. The caps are important. You never want to put the wrong cap on the wrong side. You want to put the left cap on the left side. You want to put the right cap on the right side. Why? Because if you was to flip it around, do it the other way, you could actually tighten this down to where your rear end does not rotate at all. It actually will lock itself up. So, now I want to point out this. Um, when you get into it, you start tearing them apart. Uh, you're going to have to measure backlash, in play, and uh, run out. Well, that's what these little beauties are. Um, instead of how you would have on a conventional light duty vehicle, um, they have shims to kind of move the, uh, the ring gear, housing, all of it, left to right, to give you your backlash. Uh, your right. Now, as you turn this one to put it closer that way or you know, however you you gotta set it, you would also turn it the opposite, adjusting, uh, I call them nuts. The opposite adjusting nut. The same amount of turns you used on this one, you wanna use the same turns on this one. So that way you're not tightening this one, just a little bit on this one, and now you're too tight on your bearing. You can't move it. You're causing more heat to travel on your when you're in, you're causing more wear. You'll end up replacing the part. And this is also a little bit different because as your whole your your spider gears are set in, it basically covers up all your spider gears. 
more open. You can actually see that your spider gears are there. And you'll be able to tell, you know, if you need to replace them or not. And you also want to be inspecting your cross to make sure you don't see any discoloring. If you see any discoloring, that means that these spider gears are seizing up on this, this cross. That can cause overheating, excessive wear, and in this term, a wobble.